Hey folks, uh, uh, this lesson is perpendicular bisectors of triangles. Remember, an upside down capital T means our word perpendicular. Instead of writing uh, the word triangle, I'm just going to put the triangle symbol right there. And don't forget, uh, this is an integrated math 2 lesson. So when you go to mrmathblog.com, you'll go click the integrated math 2 link at the top. All right, so here's our question. How can we use perpendicular bisectors to find a point that is equidistant from all the vertices of the triangle? All right, so uh, here's some definitions, and I'm just going to draw the circle figure right here to use our word circle right there, okay? So that's, a, that's in geometry is what we use right there. So a circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is uh, circumscribed about the polygon. So here we have circle C that is circumscribing triangle XYZ, okay? So this is called the circumcircle right here, okay? And point C is called the circumcenter. So here we have the circumcenter of the circumcircle that's circumscribing this triangle. Oh boy. All right. All right. So the circumcenter comes from the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle where they all meet. Do you remember doing that paper folding activity that we did uh, the other day in our class? So that's what we're going to do with a compass right here. So we're all, hopefully all have a compass in our hand and a straight edge or the ruler or the side of a student body card or something with a nice straight edge and we're going to uh, construct uh, the circumcircle. So go ahead and make a triangle with a straight edge, triangle ABC. Try to make it an obtuse scaling triangle like this one, okay? And what we're going to do is uh, construct the perpendicular bisectors. Remember the circumcircle, the circumcenter, comes where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So they all intersect, all three of them, at the same spot. When we folded those triangles last week, uh, today's Monday, uh, last Friday, uh, those those all intersected in the same spot right there. So, so let's go ahead and construct the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my compass and make sure, and then put your pointy part uh, over here on one of the vertices, I'll put it on point B. I'm going to bisect side BC. You have to make sure your compass is open up more than halfway. So if that's my halfway mark, make sure it's opened more than that. Okay, and we're going to arc it on top and on bottom. So this is how we do a perpendicular bisector. Arc it on that top right there, and then keep the same compass opening, and we're going to do that over here on the bottom right here. Let me. So I'm going to arc it down here. Okay, so there it is right there. And then with that same compass opening, since I'm doing side BC, we do the same compass opening from over here. Put the pointy over there, and we're going to arc it uh, over here. And they got to see, oh boy, I almost didn't make that arc big enough right there. They got to intersect right there. And so if they don't, you just got to make it, got to go back and redo the other arc and make sure they intersect. So they intersect right there. Okay, and then we're going to pick up our straight edge and then connect those guys. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll see I did that there, right there, and then connect them. And what happens is, is we just created a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to put a right angle here, and I'm going to put a dash there and a dash there to show that these two sides are congruent. So we bisected it and made it a right angle. All right, now let's do the same thing from... Uh, for uh, you can do either other segment here, you guys. You can either do segment AC or side uh, AB. I think I'll do AB. Okay, so let me go grab uh, the compass, and so I don't confuse my arcs uh, with my other arcs. I'm doing a different color. You don't have to, but I would make your compass opening uh, probably a little bit bigger, so it doesn't look like it's uh, making the same. Cause see, if I go down here and do the same compass opening. It's going to be the exact same arc as before right there. So let's just make it a little bit bigger so uh, we can distinguish the arcs right there. Okay, so I'm going to arc, and I did it in red here. I'm going to arc here, go on this side, do the same thing over here. Okay, arc over here, and then same compass opening. We're going to do that from over here. Okay, you with me? And then we're going to arc it right, right there. And then take it up and all the way up there. And then where these other arcs, in this case my red arcs, are intersecting, I'm going to pick up a straight edge. 
and connect those guys okay so here I did that that connect up a straight edge and then it makes another perpendicular bisector there's a right angle right there and we just made these guys congruent to each other because we bisected it right there all right now I can do that again with side AC but I do know it's going to go right through that point so I only need to do two of them that point right there is going to be our circumcenter I'll call it point P. Okay, so it's going to be the center of the circle that circumscribes this triangle, which just means that this radius is going to equal this radius is going to equal this radius. Okay, so PA is going to equal PB and PC. They're all the radiuses of the circle. So if we go ahead and construct the circumcircle, I'm going to do it in green right here, and then Put the pointy right there and then I'm going to rotate it down and just grab any one of the vertices. Make sure your compass opening is open to one of the vertices. I'll do it over here at B. Okay, so I got to stretch it open a little bit and we just got to make sure it goes through right there. Okay, now once it goes through one of them, it's going to go through all of them because this is the circumcenter of the circle that's going to go through all three of these guys. So Watch this. This is fun. That goes off the chart a little bit. It's going to go up and out on this a little bit. Okay. And then so there it is right there. Okay. I'll just slide it down. So uh, there's my circumcircle. Okay. So we just created a, a circumcircle where the circumcenter was outside the triangle. Sometimes it's outside the triangle. Sometimes we did some paper folding last week. It was inside the triangle. Okay. Sometimes it was right on the triangle. So it's outside the triangle when there is an obtuse triangle there. It's inside the triangle when all three angles are acute. And it was on the triangle right there. The circumcenter is right there when it's a right triangle. So when that's a right angle right there. Okay. All right. So um, uh, three or more lines that intersect at the same point are said to be concurrent to each other. So the perpendicular bisectors are concurrent to each other. All right, that point uh, is called the point of concurrency, where they all intersect. So the circumcenter theorem just says that the circumcenter, which is formed by the perpendicular bisectors, is equidistant to the vertices of the triangle. So here, P is the circumcenter because uh, we created a perpendicular bisector, another perpendicular bisector, and another right angle, so perpendicular bisector. So this is the center. In fact, if I put the center of my compass right there and as long as we created it nice and perfectly and I lined it up so uh, it's going to go right through A right there then I can create my circumcircle right there it's going to go right around and go through oops I missed it just a little bit so I don't know I goofed right there so never mind but it should have went right through there that that picture is off a little bit so uh, anyways um, uh, if it is the circumcircle right there then it's going to uh, it's going to end up bisecting, it's, I'm sorry, it's going to make this uh, segment congruent to this segment congruent to this segment because they are just the radius of that circle that would go around. My circle missed a little bit, so I just goofed on this picture somehow. So these aren't exact, actually, that's probably not a perfectly right angle. So maybe my P is off just a little bit right there. So anyway. It should have went through these pieces right here. So, uh, but this one right here, this one that we did right here, let's go back to this. This was my the, my radius. This was my radius, and this was my radius. And so, what happened is we made uh, uh, all radii of a circle congruent. So that's what that theorem says right there. So let's use some of that right there. Well, I'm going to go back to that. That's important stuff right there. You see the right triangles right there? They're going to be giving us some lengths, and we can use our shortcut p triples. You guys remember the p triples? A squared uh, plus b squared equals c squared. Here, three squared plus four squared equals five squared. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. 8, 15, 17 works. 7, 24, 25 works. And if I multiply 3 times 2, 4 times 2, 5 times 2, 6, 8, 10 works. Multiplied all these numbers by 2, that would work also. 16, 30, 34 would work. Uh, what's this? Times 2 is 14. Times 2 is 48. Times 2 is 50. So 14, 48, 50 is another P triple. So um, these are the target ones, and then the multiples of those would give us P triples anyway. So here we got uh, KZLZ.
and MZ are the perpendicular bisectors of triangle GHJ. Well, that means that's the center of the circumcircle that would go through and go and go through there. So this radius would equal this radius would equal this radius right there. So we're going to use the information that they give us and find the other lengths. And this figure is not drawn to scale. All right, so it says ZM is equal to 7. So we'll put a 7 right there. ZJ is 25. So ZJ and then HK right there is 20. Let's put those on there so we can see what we're talking about. All right, it says find ZH. Okay, so ZH right here is another radius of the circle. These are all radii of the circle because this is the circumcenter right there. So uh, then we know that uh, it's going to also equal to 25 because this radius, this is 25, that's 25, that's 25. Okay, now this is 20. Well, that's a perpendicular bisector, so that's the midpoint. So that's 20 over there also. So HG is going to be the two 20s together. 20 and 20 is going to give us that, that 40 right there. All right, so uh, notice the P triples that are happening right here. So here's 7, 24, 25. They're not asking for that, but I can figure out that length, no problem. So that means that length is 24. And the whole length is 48. And I know that this length is 15 because this is uh, 3, 4, 5, P triple. This is 3 times 5, 4 times 5, 5 times 5. 15, 20, 25 is a P triple. They're not asking for that. It's just uh, shortcuts in case you get to those later. You can always use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. All right. Let's put those lengths in there. Okay. So they gave us that right there. Okay. So here's a radius right here. This radius is 85. So is this radius. So is this radius right there. Okay. 136 right there. So that means this is the, that's the midpoint. So take half. Those are 68 right there and I think that's everything we need to do okay so okay uh, HG it says um, it says uh, find KG okay so KG is going to be uh, half of HG okay 68 and 68 is half of 36 so um, KG KG right here is 68 right there. All right, this one says find ZJ. Well, ZJ is a radius of the circle. It equals ZH right there, so it equals 85 right there. All right, okay, so I didn't see any P triples, but of course you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find some other lengths. I could find this length right here and do X squared plus 13 squared equals 85 squared. I can find this length right here by doing 68 squared plus X squared equals 85 squared. Okay, uh, I don't think I can get that length or that length because I need one of the other ones right there. Anyways, so here we got a triangle. It's a right triangle right here, and, and C is the circumcenter. Uh, and D is the circumcenter. Sorry, this is a circumcenter, which means this radius equals this radius equals this radius of the circle that would circumscribe this triangle right here. So what's the length of AB? Okay, it says CD equals 6.5. So this is going to be 6.5, and so is this going to be 6.5. So both of them together for AB is going to be, what's 6.5 and 6.5? That's going to be, what, 13? Yeah, there you go. All right, one last little piece. Okay, we got this triangle. Let's go ahead and graph it. It's always going to be a right triangle in here. Whoops, there goes my my keys. I'm in my truck. So I got someone teaching in my classroom. So it's hard to do these videos when someone's in there. Anyway, since my prep period at school. So it's always going to be a right triangle when you graph these guys. Okay, and it says find the circumcenter. Okay, so the circumcenters are from the perpendicular bisectors. So look at this horizontal. If I drew a vertical, Find the midpoint of this horizontal. There's six going across, so go by three. One, two, three. And then draw the vertical. The vertical is going to go down here. That's the perpendicular bisector. Here, look at this vertical right here. And this is also six. Coincidence that it's an isosceles right triangle. But anyways, one, two, three. There's the midpoint. So the perpendicular bisector to this one's going to be right here. Let's go ahead and do that right there. There's that perpendicular bisector. There's that perpendicular bisector. Where they intersect is our circumcision circle or circumcenter okay so there it is right there at uh, 2 2 right there okay so by the way you guys on right triangles your circumcircle uh, I'm sorry your circumcenter this should say circumcenter is always on the hypotenuse right there all right if you are in our class that's going to be your assignment take care